we've finally come to the biggest set in the new City Space line for 2024 and the last review of this series. The 60434 Space Base and Rocket Launchpad, a set with 1422 elements and a recommended retail price of 140 euros or 145 dollars, which is equivalent to a price per element of almost 10 cents per part. It represents a space base installed on the planet of our free-eyed green friends, but with a very friendly look. Where the research of crystals and magenta ice cream, I mean berries, and red plants continues, being these the necessary elements to extract and produce the energy for the batteries needed to put all this equipment to work. However, despite being the biggest set, it may not necessarily be the best. First back with a rocky area, with a liquid substance in the middle, with a microorganism printed on a tile, ready to be observed under the microscope, and I hope a new alien doesn't come from here. Ripley is not on the set to save the day. In the background, some stones with plants and fruits, in magenta, and the mechanism that, when turned, reveals one of the hidden crystals. There is also a truck, very simple, where our highlight does not use on the sides of the cabin. This vehicle is used to transport the pallet with some of the collected elements. If the size is sufficient for this purpose, it's a shame it didn't a little bigger to be able to transport the models capsules as well. With the second book, we set up the lunar base with a crane and command post. With bags number 2, 3 and 4, we only built the base, and honestly for me, the set could be as perfect if it was only this. The design is excellent with good details. The base opens through hinges and it's divided into three sections. The main entrance with a lifting gate with a cool looking pattern that opens manually and it's a shame it doesn't stay open. Upon entering we came across a kind of cloakroom where astronauts can place their helmets and jetpacks air tanks separate by their respective colors. We also have a cafeteria with two giant stickers placed on the huge pillars. One with the musical menu and the other with an image kind of adequate to the place, which leaves me a little thoughtful about what they serve here. In this area there's a table with a plate with a sandwich, a mug and a beverage machine. On the other side we have a laboratory and a medical station. There is a microscope to analyze the berries of the fruit plants, plain by the huge sticker on the back. The other sticker contains what appears to be some sort of information about our health report on the minifigures, with the last field appearing to be poop yellow, well, that explains the cafeteria sticker. Still on the base, namely its exterior, there are a few more details that deserve to be highlighted. On each of the round pillars there is a hydraulic stabilizer, which can be directed to the either side. When doing this, the pillar also rotates, which causes the huge stickers inside to move as well. At the back there is a window on, on one side, a door that allows you to place several model capsules, like those that appear in the larger sets of the theme. With bags 5, 6 and 7 we build the rest of the base. It also has a crane, which despite supposedly being just for moving the pallets with the planet's collected elements, in my opinion it makes much more sense for them to be used to move the several modular capsules. The arm is extendable, has a string of more than 150 cm and rotates 360 degrees without changing the arrangement of any element of the structure. At the top there is a command post with 4 seats inside. Highlighting these stickers, which refer to communications with two other sets in the theme, the interstellar spaceship and the modular space station. Regarding the later, there is an equal one in the same set, but in this case it is a station that establishes communications with the base. The ceiling of the command post is just standing on top with no attached connections and contains an antenna so that the astronauts don't miss the soap opera broadcast at night. We reach the first book with another connection to the modular station set ship shuttle that carries model capsules. It has some similar features with the interstellar spaceship, but the rear is practically hollow, containing enough space to attach one model. And regarding this, the model of this set contains equipment that extracts energy from crystals and plants on this planet. We move on to the launch pad, and this is for me the least successful build of the set. It uses one of the pieces we know from stunts, and the rest of which is brick built but I confess that the look of the ramp itself looks more like something from an artificial snow ski resort or taken from a jackass movie. Like all equipment in the sets in this line, the base also has a battery with energy from the crystals. Finally, the figures. If four are like the rest of the theme, two are exclusive. We have the theme chief engineer miner with a dark orange element and exclusive face, 
And we have the leader of this base, a gentleman with a golden helmet, torso and head with an exclusive print. The eccentric look is complete with a dark visor and what appears to be some kind of scepter. In conclusion, it's not one of my favorite sets from the team, but I don't consider it a bad set either, quite the opposite. It has a lot of play features, and it's a nice addition to make this line more appealing for play. The strong point is a not lead the base with a fantastic look, and the inclusion of the models is perfect. It seems to me that the crane is used a little poorly, and that the terrain area of the planet recreated in LEGO could have been better explored. Pun intended. The vehicles fulfill their function, but the ramp is really strange. The figures complete the set, even with the eccentric commander. So, what is your opinion about the set and the theme? Thank you LEGO and Lang for sending the set for review, opinions on it are my own. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, the next days you will have awesome reviews. And don't forget, play well!